surely God is my salvation. I will trust and I will not be afraid, for the Lord God is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation with joy. We all will draw from the wells of salvation and say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name, make known God's deeds among the nations, proclaim that God's name is exalted, sing praises to the Most High God. For God has done gloriously. Let this be known in all the earth. Shout loud and sing for joy. O royal Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Yeshua, we thank you for the presence of your Ruach HaKodesh this morning in each and every one of our lives. This day as we have joined together collectively, revive and renew each and every one of us for the next week's journey, God. Renew us in our prayer lives, in our family lives, in our work lives, our church lives. Strengthen us. Hold us close, God. Even those who are not here today that are a part of Beth Salem, wherever they are, God, let their revival and their renewal for the week come as well. In the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach, I do pray. Jesus the Messiah. All God's people say, Amen. 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 Wells of salvation. Sometimes I constantly tell you many things are hidden in plain sight. Many times I don't think you believe me. Patty does. I was going, I was going to do a video clip, but I'm just going to tell you something that's hidden in plain sight that we have watched probably when we were younger and have watched the remake of it now that we're older. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. How many of you have ever seen Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Have you seen it, Miss Lena? If I did, it's been a while back, so I don't remember exactly what. Well, you have this great chocolate maker who decides to have a contest because he has no offspring and things like that. He's going to have a contest and give out all these golden tickets to little children because it has to be a little child that gets it. And if you get one of the golden tickets, you get to go to this massive candy factory where all of the better candy in the world is made and he has all of these secrets about that. And you have this one little boy who is dirt, and I mean dirt poor. If you saw the house, it looked worse than Dorothy's house after it landed. <laughs> the house was towed up from the floor. But when you go into the house, there's a big bed in the middle of the room. Y'all seen it? The grandparents of both sides, the mom's side and the dad's side, they're all laid in the bed, two on one side, two on the other, facing each other. And they stay in the bed all the time. And then finally, the little boy, Charlie, gets a golden ticket. And what happens? You know what happens when he gets that golden ticket? His mother says, I'll go. No, the grandfather jumps up out of the bed and says, no, I'm going to go with Charlie. What's hidden in plain sight right there? He's been sitting himself there for how long and he could have got up and helped the family out of poverty. Come on now. The young people, the millennials, the extras saw this before we did. The grandpa and other grandparents, I thought they were invalids. They couldn't even walk. And hidden in plain sight was laziness and inability to deal with the situ family situation and circumstance. Inability had paralyzed Grandpa. But the minute he saw that boy was getting ready to go to the chocolate factory, you shall not go alone. That was hidden in plain sight. See, I've never seen it like that either until my daughters were just laughing one day. And I can't tell you exactly what the meme said. And I went, all of that was hidden in plain sight. What if Linda went home? Told her son, ain't nothing wrong with me. I feel good. And she put her bed in the living room. And everybody that walked in had 
shut-in, no more going to the prisons, no more coming and fellowshipping with the church. Linda's in bed. But nothing wrong with Linda. See, hidden in plain sight was all the problems that family really had. And we fell under the sway of this society and said, look at God. He got rich. We never watch it again. You guys have to make this watch it again and consider really want to give this opportunity because his mom and dad, the ones up working every day, day and night, they should have gone with the boy to the chocolate factory. But the one that's been sitting around doing nothing and also was hiding, hiding money. Come on, Linda, he was hiding money. Had a little coin. Look, remind me of my grandmother pull out a sock or something she would have, and she'd have it, the wallet and the change tied in the sock pinned to her girl. So I'm gonna tell the truth about it. So she said, if someone robs me, they literally have to strip me of my underclothes. I used to be like, Lord, have mercy. No one was robbing Lucille Smith. Hidden in plain sight in one of the most favorite children's stories is more than you think. Review Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and then take another look at those grandparents that are sitting there in the bed doing nothing. Sitting on their little piece of change. That's the way the wells of salvation can be. Especially if you allowed yourself to be dumbed down in ways that you shouldn't be. There was nothing. They dumbed themselves down in that story. I love that this says, with joy, you shall draw water. Sasan is joy in Hebrew. And it is an exulting type of joy. The way it's constructed, it means it's a leaping joy in you toward God. This joy, before you get to the water, you know you're going to get it. But that joy, you know how kids feel when they know tomorrow is Christmas Day. You can't explain it. They can't sleep. They can't wait. It's just exalting joy for the next day. That's the way we should feel exalted joy for the wells of salvation. But so many times, before we even come near it, we've been talked out of much of it. We have an encounter with the Most High God through yesterday. The Son of God reveals himself to you. And you know that you know you've had a self-actualization and sanctified and justification and you're all right with God. And somewhere in an unseen place, somehow you know I am a child of the living God. Somehow you know in the scheme of things, so much more to you now exists that spreads up through the eons into the presence of the Most High God. And then you talk to somebody. And sometimes they have a way of trying to compartmentalize who you are. You've got all this joy, joy, joy. And you say, you know what? I was asleep, and I saw, or I was walking, and I sensed, or I heard. And people are like that, but have you been in church? Well, the last time you paid your tithe, did you say the sinner's prayer? You say in the wells of, of salvation all around you and you've experienced this joy to exalt God? Come to yourself. That doesn't happen in a vacuum. It happens in church. You going with me? Because during this time, the children of Israel were being judged. And Isaiah comes up with something so beautiful. And when you read the commentary, nine, uh, chapter 9 goes a little more hand in hand with timeline of this book. One of the commentators talked about how God went to Assyria, spoke to the prophets and people in Assyria. Hear me now. Said, I need you to go and beat the you-know-what out of Israel. Just beat them down. Don't you kill them. Don't you destroy them. But you give them the tanning of their lives. And you tell them it came from me. Assyria utterly destroyed them. So 
when you go read the commentary, there's a little place in them, guys, I'm going to put a, a little marker right there. I got you, Siri, okay? Don't think I'm going to forget. God was trying to discipline the children of Israel by utilizing the other nations to discipline them because they were crippled by all of their trust in everything but God. Inside of them, salvation has always been available. We just didn't know how to access it. We couldn't stay the course because it required such an obedience. We couldn't do it. And God, after, you know, God is like my grandmother. Will give you a whooping and then give you some salve for your wounds. <laughs> and God is like, you know, surely God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. The Lord, the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is my strength and my soul. God has become my salvation. The problem is, in this modern age, everything has become our salvation but God. Sometimes we'll give God a little shout out. Thank bless your name. Mm -hmm. I said it. If you ever go watch my Facebook post, you'll hear me say a wide variety of things during the week that lead to my sermon. I talked about believers having faith. I laid hands on the car, and the car is mine. Oh, I walked around that house seven times like it was Jericho, baby, and the walls came a tumbling out. But you start saying, where's the presence of God? Our faith, we can activate it for things that really many times don't matter. They may matter in our personal lives. And God gets that. But those things that matter, that the presence of God comes flooding in and people feel the healing of God coming through because the people have come together. And that same presence when you are by yourself or even in the church that overtook you that you couldn't resist has now manifested in your midst. That doesn't happen. You know, Candy, what was the question you raised to me? Next slide, Paul. Which one about? Salvation. Um, between salvation and redemption? Or? No, just what is salvation? I think yeah. well, that's yeah. exactly how you what, put it. What exactly is salvation? Kenny, in the car, he kept looking, because many times we come to church, and someone could raise a simple question like that. What is salvation? And we, we're going to rattle off scripture after scripture. We're such good students sometimes of nothing. What is salvation? It, think, let me give you a reference. All of you, close your eyes for a minute. Are you a child of the living God? Does your spirit say yes? Besides your mom and dad, are you a child of God? Your example of salvation. You know it, right? You know who the Messiah is. That's my example. Salvation is more than just an act. It's what is experienced deep in the depths of who you are, that place in soul and spirit realm that grabs you and makes you all right before God. And you're so all right that you're not only just a person standing up there, but this is my daddy. No world can give that to you. No one in your prayer time you know that you know that you know God is parent to you. That's salvation. Ladies and that's the power of who will. That's the power of salvation. You just, it's in here. We can give long theological things about it and say this and that. You can go to the Presbyterian site and read everything that's in the, the books, the confessions. And the books concerning this great gift of salvation. What I'm saying to you is, don't forget you're experiencing it all the time. You're experiencing and living salvation 
all the time. That is why Linda is not sitting in her living room in a bed. <laughs> She's laughing. That is why we see some come and we know it takes you know, extra strength because of the physical ailments to come and join yourself with like-minded people. You're experiencing salvation among yourself. You experience salvation. It's not just a one-time shot and boom, there it is. No. It's a lifetime experience. And sometimes how we experience it are given by the dictates of people who begin to dumb down who you are in Christ Jesus. No more dumbing down who you are. The preacher is a child just like you. You know how when you were with your siblings, you might elbow one, pinch the other? I'm just like you, living a life experiencing this great salvation. And every now and then when I think I know everything about salvation, whoo, have all over again the newness of who God is in Christ Jesus. You feel a rush and you understand there's a mission and you realize your portion at the moment, at the time. And you begin to act differently and then be different in space and time. Because you're different on the inside, that hidden place from space and time where you are eternal. With joy, draw water from the wells of salvation. See, the well of salvation came built in with the package. You don't have to go over here where someone has a great gift of laying on of hands to experience the well of salvation. I just gave you an example of a self. There are times preachers, it's a lonely walk as a preacher. You can't talk to people the way you used to. You're careful because you give the wrong example, the wrong thing. People are like, oh no, she can't be preaching in my church now. And I'm already shaking with most folks. It's a long walk. And I'll tell you the truth at night sometimes when I don't feel the joy welling up in me or experience that feeling of whoosh. And I'm turning my face and saying, God, I don't understand. I'm doing everything you ask me to do. I say everything you tell me to say, no matter how it will make me look. What am I missing, God? And then whoosh, sometimes God said, you're missing my formula. You keep applying a man, woman-made formula that was given to you in the United States of what ministry is. You have to connect to my formula. And that's what I've been doing. Because God's like, no, 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 no. This isn't about you just being a good Presbyterian. This is not about you being a good Presbyterian. Or Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Methodist. <laughs> you know what I mean. The joy in you from your salvific experience. If you had to call and go all the way back, meditate and walk yourself back to when you were like Shirley Caesar and you might have been playing with God and all of a sudden you started shouting and jumping and your friend was saying, Mama, Shirley's playing with God. She said, no, baby, she ain't playing no more. We all need to have that moment. People say, oh, she's not playing anymore. Don't let someone talk you out of it or dumb down who you are. I also, from studies, can tell you statistically, the dumbing down of the church began when TV evangelism began. Tell me this, how many times in TV evangelism do you see the Apostles' Creed, any of the creeds? You don't. Next slide, Paul. You know why? Because everything they did became Jesus-centered, not Trinity-centered. Hello? When all of the evangelists get on there, many people will ascribe to what they say and how they do and how they be, and there's no room for the uniqueness of who God has made you and you and you. 
Because we're being like Juanita Biden. Hey, bless the Lord. God is. We're trying to be, instead of understanding the power of your own anointing. And every one of you have it. Not just your preacher. Salvation in this is presented as a feminine noun. It's a soft side of God. And it sounds a little bit like Yeshua, which means salvation in a construct as well. This is Yeshu, Yeshu Ah. Yeshu, I think it's Yeshu Ah. Not Yeshua. It's the way the, you see the lines and stuff? It's different because of the pointing and the vowels, the way they're placed. It's a feminine now, meaning salvation, deliverance, help. Have you ever felt your help come? My friend, you have salvation. Because sometimes we're just like, this morning, at, for just a short time, Kenny got distracted. All the and I could see was a cement wall. And then, whoo, our help came. Thank you, God. The primary meaning is to rescue from distress or danger. The primary meaning of salvation is rescue. So we further discussed, you remember Will Smith's movie, Seven Seconds? You remember how it took just seven seconds for him to lose his precious wife? He went about giving away his organs and doing things he knew would bring him to death. So my husband raised the question, was he seeking salvation? My assessment, exegetical opinion of the movie is, no, he had salvation. He needed to release the guilt from his soul so he wasn't weighed down that when he died, he could have sinned. I know that's heavy. Because see, to be absent from the body is to be present with God wherever you are. See, some of us think, that means I went to heaven. Well, you did hear David say God's presence is in hell too, right? He was so weighed down that all it took was seven seconds to make a bad decision that ended the love of his life. And God has given us so much more than seven seconds. What you doing? How you treating people? Are you judging people? Or are you walking in the power of your salvation in a way that people are like, okay, and you don't then make it a church experience. Well, if you don't know God, come to my church and you'll find out. That's like people say, they put God out of school. When? When did they put God out of school? God is, has God stopped being everywhere, Miss Lena? Did God stop being in your car, in this building, outside? In the, God is everywhere. Come on, believers. Let's, let's know who we are in God. Now, understand the power of salvation. Do you know just presence can break the yokes that bind people? This is why most people will tell you, I feel so good after I talk to you. Next slide, Paul. So the mayin, I wanted to deal with the mayin here. It's the water. Describes a place of habitation for various reasons. It refers to God's heavenly abode and the sanctuary where God dwells among God's people. Have you, you have to connect in the deepest parts of who you are. Salvation didn't happen on your flesh. Flesh hasn't yet been delivered. Y'all hear me? On the inside. Where you cannot be touched by certain things. The hand of God, the well of God is the well of salvation. The good thing about this text that I love, it reminded me of the woman at the well. Oh, I give me some of that water. I want some. Jesus, who I had. You know what you gotta do to get some of that water. See, she didn't turn around and do what we do in America. Fix it, Jesus. Just help me. She began to receive the water, so much so that she went and she was a scourge in the town and she brought the whole town back. Come on, if you're the one in the town, oh, she is the you know what of the town. She tell everybody, husband, girl, don't have her around your family. She went and all those people, she said, oh no, y'all gotta come and meet this brother. This brother told me stuff about myself. None of y'all even know. They probably like, it mean it's worse. There's more. <laughs> she was so 
follow her back to the way. It's God in you. If you haven't drawn from the well that's within you, that well, salvation is already in you. People can dumb it down and make you feel like you're disconnected from it. I'm telling you to undumb down yourself. Raise Amen. up! Your child, Amen. your child of the living God. Amen. Saved by the Holy One of God who suffered and died for each and every one of us. You are not without. The problem is you just haven't used what you've been equipped with. You're like the grandpa and the grandma sitting in the bed in Willie Walker. You wait for life to happen to somebody else so you can jump in the midst of their salvation, not yet realizing your own. Y'all better come with me today. Get out of the bed. Get out of the Christian spiritual bed that has so anesthetized us to what's around us and we can't understand the victory that's already in us. We can only see what's good happening to somebody else. Well, let me go over here. Can I go with you? That's what happens in hidden in plain sight. Look in the mirror. In plain sight is a child of the living God filled with the Holy Spirit, bought by the blood of Jesus Christ, paid a high price to get you where you are. You do not have a right to sit in the bed. You do not have a right not to get up. If you can't get up, pick up the phone. But God's not done with any of us yet. God's waiting for us to awaken to who we are, why we are, and how we are, that we may cut through this realm in a way that will manifest something different. Guys, you've heard me pray. We had an earthquake, 7.1. Nobody died. Come on, come with me. I was like, look, God, is that you? Hello, is that you, God? I'm like, yes. Trying to wake us up. And we can't even, well, it was a 7.1. Now they're saying there's a bigger one coming. Where am I? Because, see, the problem is, if you stay tuned in too long to lie a vision, all your visions will be lies. You won't be able to see the truth for the lie of vision. I had to extract myself, and then yesterday walking through, there was an explosion. Get this, in Plantation, Florida? I'm like, God, you deliver in Plantation now. Did anybody die? Yes, I am. Delivered your ancestors on one. Don't forget. The Lord, the Lord is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. God has become your salvation. With joy, the joy that is within you, you will, you will, you will continue to draw from the wells of salvation. Nobody can take that from you. Denomination. Ignorance. Nothing can take the wells of salvation from within your soul that was planted there by the Ruach HaKodesh because of the finished works of Jesus. You all know God in this way, I know. Bless your name, God, that you are not hiding yourself. Sometimes, God, we think you're only going to the big churches. You're only going to the churches where everybody's rolling in a Beamer, rolling in a Mercedes, and we bought the pastor a roll. Sometimes, God, even I, your servant, gets caught in the hoopla of nothing. Oh, but God, when you open our eyes and we see all of who we are in you and all that you impart, to us here at Beth Salem and all that you put it in our power to do here in the midst of our great city of Columbus, Georgia. Oh God, my soul is overwhelmed with your love. And indeed, Beth Salem has been drawing from the wells of salvation for over a hundred and some years. May we never take it for granted, most high God. In the name of Yeshua, I do. Oh, God.
God's people say. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Yeshua. That in spite of how we treated you when you were here, you did it anyway. <coughs> Thank you, Yeshua, for your divine obedience to the Most High God. That nothing was going to stop you from finishing what you came here to do. We would not be cut off in various ways from the presence of God, but restored to the presence of the Most High God. God, that we all have our well experience this week. And hold on to it. It may become a daily experience, God. Not just a week. Not just a one day. But every day, we will, with joy, exalted joy, draw from the well of salvation. In the name of Jesus, I pray. All God's people say, Amen. <laughs> to warm you. A moon being to charm you, a sheltering angel so nothing can harm you, laughter to cheer you, faithful friends near you, and whenever you pray, heaven to hear you. In the name of Jesus, go in the power of who you are. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hi, Facebook family. You know, when I was giving my sermon, all of the members reminded me that it wasn't seven, what did I say, seven? Seven, seven seconds. seconds. Seven seconds seven in the Will pounds. Smith movie, it was seven pounds. So, you know, I make mistakes all the time. The great thing is, I'm amongst believers who have no problem making me aware that was not right. <laughs> I do hope you enjoyed today's sermon. If you have any questions, just send me a message as some of you normally do. Also, if you're ever in the Columbus area, come on by. Spend time with us. We are your family after all. We understand that you're our social media family, but sometimes if you're close, just come and rub elbows with us. We would love to love on you. Now, let me say this. If you haven't liked and followed Beth Salem, you're missing out. Also, you can go to Charlotte Pastor Caldwell on YouTube, like and follow. Love you. See you next week.